Welcome to Culture Talk. This is the segment where we discuss culturally relevant topics to equip you to share your faith more effectively. I'm joined with Jeff Zwering, astrophysicist. Hello. Hi, Sandra. It's good to be here. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you're joining us because we're going to be talking about something that's been in the news lately, and that's Beetlejuice, but not Michael Keaton's character, right, no. the supernova. Well, so, it's, a, it's a star that we well, think might yeah, be supernova. supernova. Yeah. So what, well, first, what is Betelgeuse? So Betelgeuse is just a really big star, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for everybody up here in the Northern Hemisphere. If you go out at night in the winter, you can see the constellation Orion. It's the upper left star mm -hmm. in Orion. Uh, it's often one of the brightest stars, but the cool thing about it is it's a variable star as well. So it's, it's one of those just really interesting stars. And so it's been in the news because it's been changing a little bit lately. So what has happened, because it, it has been in the news everywhere, and not just in like scientific journals, it's been in the popular news. Right. What's going on with well, it? Well, what happened is that it's gotten dimmer than it normally has. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a variable star, and it changes in brightness quite a bit. But for uh, kind of probably a confluence of a couple of different effects, it's gotten dimmer than it normally has. And so some people are saying, oh, it may be in the process of collapsing to go supernova. So right. that's kind of what's going on. It's not quite so dramatic as that, but that's part of why it's made it into the popular press. So there's this possibility maybe that it might supernova or explode. Um, what would that mean for us? Like, how far is it? And and given its size, like, what would that mean for us here on Earth? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a few hundred light years away, maybe a thousand light years away. So it, probably to first order, not much would happen. I mean, it's going to get really bright. It's going to give off a lot of light, a lot of energy, but all that's going to be contained largely around the star. There, there's going to be some radiation that come off that may have some smaller effects here. Uh, but to a first approximation, not much is going to happen on Earth if that goes off. So supernova are big things, but space is really big. And so uh, it's probably not going to be a big deal. Yeah. Speaking of big, how big is it? Compared it, to our it is sun. a really cool star. We don't know exactly how large mm -hmm. it is, but given our estimates, if you were to take Betelgeuse and put it in place of the sun in our solar system, it would be at least the size of Earth's orbit, oh, wow. if not the size of Jupiter's orbit. Yeah. So this is a massive star. Uh, you know, it's uh, anywhere from probably 15 to 20 solar times the mass of the sun. So it's burning very quick, or burning all of its hydrogen and all of its mm -hmm. fuel up really quickly. It's been doing that for probably a million years. And whether it's tomorrow, which is probably not, somewhere within the next 100,000 years, it's going to go supernova. Yeah. So it's not a matter of if, but when it will, but probably not in my lifetime, which is a bummer because I think it would be so cool to see. <laughs> we like explosions, right? <laughs> I do. Yeah. I love, and that's the uh, arguably the biggest, like one ones, of the biggest but... explosion you can have in the, in, the, in the galaxy or in the universe. So I think you had written about that in your devotional impact events that if you could... Um, be safe, but witness a supernova, you would love to do that. Yeah, it's like once once we're resurrected and have indestructible bodies, it's like, okay, up front, right when a supernova goes off, just With to see popcorn. what it's like there. <laughs> Man, all the popcorn would get blown away. Yeah. But. <laughs> so um, now we know its size, it's super huge, and we know that it's so many light years away. Right. What does that tell us about the universe? given its size and, and its distance from well, us. Well, one of the cool things is, is that because a lot of things astronomically happen on long time scales. So this is a supernova, that, or a star that will go supernova fairly recently mm -hmm. by astronomical standards, but we're still talking 10,000, maybe 100,000 years. Um, but by being able to see lots of different stars in different phases, we can get a picture of what's going on in the universe. And so this is a star that burns its fuel up really quickly, but we can see kind of the end stages of that. We can see other stars that are much younger, other stars that are lighter that are going to take much longer. And so it gives us a picture of just this awesome universe we live in and for the billions of years that it's been around and what all's gone on in that time. And so it, it's one of a bit of data that gives us a more complete picture of how the universe behaves. So you talked about like billions of years. So mm -hmm. when we detect something like Betelgeuse, that tells us, and is that the only way to interpret it, that it is billions of years? Or is there a way to interpret it from, say, a young Earth perspective? 
I mean, I'm pretty sure if you go look at any one thing, you could probably say, well, okay, this could be this. But uh, if you're looking to say, hey, we want to find a general explanation that accounts for all the different stars that we see and all the different supernova and the nova and the bright stars and the dim stars, when you, when you put all that together, a lot of that boils down to some relatively basic physics that if we apply that basic physics, it says, yeah, the universe really is millions and billions of years old. And so I'm not going to say it's not possible, but the, the most parsimonious, the one that gives the simplest explanation to account for the most wide-ranging effects is that the universe really is a few billion yeah. years old. So, Well, that's helpful then. So when we're having conversations with someone who is, maybe they're not a Christian and they're excited about, you know, because mm -hmm. what we see in the popular news, it's like, it's it seems almost like it's on the verge of exploding. Right. So like, you know, maybe like in June or whatever, but it's not. <laughs> I'm hoping know. for December. It'd be brighter that way. Right, no, right. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the, uh, I think the reason why people are excited because right. it's like something fascinating is happening in the universe. And that's, that's something to be excited about. Now, it's not happening right around the corner, but when we have conversations with non-Christians, mm -hmm. Um, how can we kind of interject um, our understanding from a Christian perspective of how the universe, universe behaves? Well, I, I think that's one thing. You know, people generally who are fascinated about this are kind of interested in science and what science yeah. has to say. And so the better we understand the science, the more we can articulate what's going on and being able to come in and say, yeah, Beetlejuice, it's going to go supernova, probably not now. Not get caught up in the hype and understand the science well so that we can talk about it. That does give us a credibility now when we bring in and talk about how this may point to a creator or how Jesus came and walked on the earth. We built up a credibility that they're more likely to listen right. to us. And so that's, I think that credibility is important because once, I, I know for me, if somebody's lost their credibility, I don't listen to what they have to say right. on much of anything until it's rebuilt some way. And right. so being able to talk about the science well is a way to build that credibility. Yeah, that's an important reminder. So do you have any resources that you would point people to to kind of help get equipped and understand and something like um, Beetlejuice? I, I would go to our website, reasons.org. Yeah. Typically, we've talked about something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know that there's anything specifically about Beetlejuice, mm -hmm. but uh, honestly, if I'm honest, if I want to go find basic information about something, I'll go look at Wikipedia. That's a great place <laughs> oh. to start. Uh, it's not the final answer. Right. But then, then, so that gives me information about how large is the star, where is it, what's actually going on. Right. But then also, that science faith component, look on our website, see what right. we have to, to how to make that transition into, hey, this actually points towards a career creator, and this is what's cool about it. Well, thank you so much for that, Jeff. Excellent tips. If you want to hear more on this topic, visit reasons.org.